Hi, I'm Bob Schmidt with Home Remodel Workshop. I bought me a new LCD TV to take the place of that big monster TV I used to have in the past. I took some of the things that used to bother me about watching my big TV and I incorporated it into the design of the new base cabinet entertainment center setup that I'm going to use for my new LCD. I'll show you some of the things I did. Maybe that'll give you some ideas for your project. Let's get to work. A few of the things I couldn't stand about my original setup was I had all these wires and components either sitting alongside or hidden next to my TV or hidden behind my TV, like my airport for my computer and the speaker. I, I didn't want to see any of this stuff in my new setup. After getting everything out of the way to see what I had to deal with, basically I had a couple of plugs, a phone jack, a couple of cable feeds coming in, a cold air return, and my speaker wire for my surround sound system. Uh, after doing a little investigation on the cold air return, here the, the chase all the way, it was open all the way to up above, so basically I'm just going to move that cold air return grill high on the wall. And uh, after that, I'm going to go ahead and get this baseboard out of the way. I cut a plunge cut into it with my Dremel tool and got it out of the way and went ahead and uh, set a couple of base cabinets in place to see what kind of spaces I needed to fill. These were cabinets that I had salvaged off a previous job that I had done. So setting a couple of cabinets in there that filled the space up as much as possible and having enough uh, finished shelving to do my filler strips, I went ahead and started there. I'm going to have to probably replace this carpet somewhere down the road. I don't want to set these, car these cabinets on top of the carpet. So I put the carpet or the cabinets in place and I marked the front of the cabinets with some green tape knowing that I'm going to have a trim piece that goes across the base of these cabinets that I'll put down tightly to the carpet. I realized the carpet may have to be restretched in the future and at which point that's fine. If I can tuck my trim piece down to the top of the carpet and it holds it tightly enough and it doesn't pull loose or start to roll, then I'm not going to concern myself with that. Once the carpet pad and tackless were out of my way, I went ahead and took my level and I checked the floor to find the high spot. It's easier to shim cabinets up off the floor than it is to cut cabinets into the floor. So I found that high spot, I measured up on my wall, added one eighth of an inch and I made a level line all the way around. That's where I'm going to set the top of my cabinets. This level line is also where all my down measurements that are going to come that I'm going to cut for the boxes into the back of my cabinets are going to come from. You don't want to measure up off the floor because with the cabinets getting shimmed off the floor you'll miss your boxes. Knowing that I want my cabinet space somewhat evenly in this opening, what I do is I take the overall size of the opening in the front where the front of the cabinet is going to be, I subtract off the amount of the cabinets and I come up with a, a difference. And what I have to do is to divide that difference by three to come up with approximately what size filler I'm going to want in each three sections on the two end and in between the cabinets. I add an eighth of an inch on to the beginning number because of the style overhang on the cabinets themselves. I take this number, I transfer it back to the wall with a framing square because there's no guarantee that this corner is square. I make me a plumb line and that's what I'll measure my, all my over measurements on my boxes with. Once I get all the boxes measured from the level line and from our starting plumb line which is where the back of the box hits the wall, I go ahead and I transfer these numbers to the back of the cabinet, pulling from the appropriate side of course, and then taking my Dremel cut tool, I go ahead and I cut first from the back, completing most of the cut, and then go around to the inside of the cabinet and finish the balance of the cuts. Find your studs on the wall, go ahead and set your first cabinet. Making allowance for overhang and fillers, go ahead and mark your second plumb line for your next plug cuts. Once everything is plumb, shimmed, and leveled, go ahead and make a rough cut on your filler strips and test them for fit prior to cutting to proper length and installing. Using four inch strips of masonite, I custom fit each piece individually to the wall, hot glue together to make a single template to lay over top of my wood countertop so that I can cut each individual undulation out so that I don't tear up my walls while installing my countertop. 
perfect fit first time. But after looking at these doors, it's pretty obvious that I would have to have the doors open to operate my components. Also, these doors could create heat and trap component heat inside of the cabinets, and I don't want that. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut out these panels and replace them with some panels that will let air and allow my transmitter to transmit through the doors. With these simple aluminum panels with all the holes, it dulls the look of the inside of the cabinet, yet allows sound from my speaker, heat from the, the uh, components, and my transmitter to transmit through these doors so that these doors can remain closed while I'm enjoying my TV. So there you go. Hopefully that helped you out with some of the things you got to decide on during your project. I have me some snacks here and some soft drinks. And yeah, the sports program's about ready to come on. I think I'm going to enjoy that. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.